Welcome back. We'll get, we'll get started a little bit early. I heard the sessions just wrapped up earlier than, than we said. So I hope everyone enjoyed those discussions, um, hearing from our amazing XR faculty innovators, uh, just seeing how uh, these applications are working in our courses and what some of the challenges are, what some of the opportunities are. Just really exciting with such a broad level of interdisciplinary faculty and, and concepts and um, now we're really excited uh, for this, this, next, this next phase of where we're going. I'd like to take this time to introduce you to our Director of Open Learning Experiences, Lauren Booty, for an exciting announcement about the future of XR and learning. Welcome, Lauren. Thanks, Jeremy. Glad to be here. And I hope everyone was as inspired and energized as I am after hearing some of the amazing stories from our faculty innovators. We really are privileged to work with faculty who are passionate about developing engaging, relevant, and accessible learning experiences, and the ways in which immersive learning can improve lives. We are also proud to be celebrating our 10-year partnership with Coursera. In that time, we have all seen the online learning space evolve and explode. We have established ourselves as global leaders in digital education through the development of high-quality experiences where learners feel engaged, challenged, and supported. In fact, the University of Michigan has created over 200 courses and teachouts, three master track programs, and three degrees with Coursera, reaching a worldwide audience of over 8 million learners. And as we reflect in the last 10 years and look ahead to the next 10 years, it is clear to us that the next era of online learning will be increasingly centered around the future of work and society, and the key to unlocking that future for millions of learners and learning organizations will be pairing the flexibility and accessibility of online courses with immersive learning and storytelling. And that is why we are very excited to announce a new partnership with Coursera that will see us develop 10 new XR enhanced courses on the Coursera platform. These courses, the first of their kind, will begin launching in early 2023, and they will help learners develop skills and knowledge in interpersonal communication, the future of mobility and manufacturing, health equity, and more. These XR enhanced experiences will be part of our upcoming Michigan Online Future of Work Academy, a flexible non-credit online curriculum that will help learners develop the skills and competencies they need to be effective professionals in the workplace of the future. To navigate new technologies, to implement sustainable practices, develop inclusive organizations, and thrive in distributed teams. Our online learning experts are already collaborating with faculty innovators, our colleagues in the XR team led by Jeremy Nelson, and the team at Coursera to design these great new courses, which will employ immersive technologies like virtual production, augmented reality, and 360 video. They will be available as self-paced, flexible learning experiences on the Coursera platform. And now I'd very much like to introduce Van Be Betty Vanderbosch, Chief Content Officer at Coursera, to share their perspective on this exciting new collaboration. Hey, Betty. Thank you so much for the warm welcome, Lauren. I'm incredibly proud to partner with you and all of the innovators at the University of Michigan on this exciting initiative. As you mentioned, over the last 10 years, our partnership has changed how 8 million people across the world learn. The University of Michigan was one of the founding partners of Coursera, and today we begin the next phase of online learning immersive learning experiences powered by augmented, mixed, and virtual realities. Open courses from top educators, such as the University of Michigan, democratize access to knowledge, while guided projects provide hands-on learning using job-relevant tools. Now, XR content will enable social learning through the role-play simulations, and they can expand access to high-risk, high-cost education, such as mobility, manufacturing, and healthcare training. I couldn't be more excited. XR and VR have the power to truly transform the learning experience. Studies show students report increased learning outcomes and businesses can train employees up to four times faster while increasing their confidence in applying new skills. Learning how to apply skills using this new technology will become even more critical in the next few years. The World Economic Forum 
found that half of all employees worldwide need reskilling by 2025. That's a lot of people who need a lot of reskilling. To best prepare learners for the future of work, the University of Michigan interviewed more than 50 industry leaders to inform their XR strategy and collaborated with leading global companies, including Novartis, General Motors, and Microsoft. Now, anyone, anywhere can not just learn, but also practice the critical skills they need to succeed in the workforce. Coursera is honored to work with visionary universities like the University of Michigan to harness the latest technology and change how the world learns. Thank you, Betty and Lauren. I just wanna say that it's thrilling to see the way Coursera and our partners such as Epic Games, Microsoft and HP are enthusiastically embracing the potential of XR technology in education, both in person and in open online learning. We're working closely with our faculty innovators to explore the range of XR enhanced experiences that are exciting to test the potential of 360 videos, virtual production, augmented reality, virtual reality experiences in creating immersive storytelling and learning experiences just like some of the ones you saw today. We're really excited to bring those to the online space. <clears throat> just as important, we wanna design these courses so that they are open for all. That means making the courses accessible on mobile devices, VR headsets or other tech won't be required, but if a learner has them, they can have a deeper experience. When the XR initiative began in 2019, we were hopeful that XR would be embraced by faculty, students, and staff on campus, but we were unsure how these technologies would converge in the online environment. Today, we have funded dozens of XR projects across 11 of our academic units. The opportunities are truly interdisciplinary, as you've seen, and are relevant to career seekers across professions and sectors of a transforming and transformational society and economy. We've hired 36 XR student fellows, We've collaborated with the XR Safety Initiative, the XR Association, the Bipartisan Policy Center to advocate for data privacy protections and XR policy. And we've partnered with colleagues at Imperial College of London, Georgia Tech, the New School, Columbia and Stanford to bring awareness and best practices for XR in higher education. It is exciting to see Coursera at the Center and the Center for Academic Innovation working together not to ask the question whether it's possible to bring XR into the open online learning space, but how best to leverage the technology to make it an immersive, enriching, and transformative experience for learners. We stand together in believing in the future and the potential of immersive learning using XR, and we will continue collaborating, innovating, and redefining education for all our global lifelong learners. I wanna show a little preview of some of the types of experiences we will be creating. One second. The way we learn is always evolving. As learning moves toward a hybrid, just-in-time approach, how we create content for the classroom and at home must change. Not everyone learns the same. And virtual production is the next evolution in hybrid education. This technology is amazing. Like what you can do with real-time visual effects in the camera, bringing 3D environments and interactive XR objects to the faculty, to the type of work you're doing, it's, it's mind-blowing. I mean, things that would have cost millions and millions of dollars to do even just a few short years ago, we can do right now with the equipment and the environment that we have today. It allows learners to engage in content in ways they never could before. It allows faculty to teach complex concepts or bring people to places they could never go on their own. But imagine now that you've created the course or you've taught your lecture in an immersive environment. And if a student has a VR headset, they can now come join you in that classroom, in that experience on their own time. So they can now experience your lecture or experience the content you've created in an immersive environment themselves. Think about the types of classes you could teach 
like going on top of the Eiffel Tower or teaching on Mars or in another environment that you've never been able to take students to. Now you can take them to these places and bring them into the learning in ways you may never have thought possible. So that's just a, a short preview of some of the things we're going to be doing together. Uh, and so thank you so much, Betty, for the, the, the collaboration and, and the working together. We're just really excited about what, what we're going to do over the next couple of years. I have to say I'm really, really excited as well. You know, when we all started 10 years ago, we didn't know where Coursera was going to end up. And we still don't know. But we do know that with Michigan, we began with open courses. And I'm sure that you, many of you will remember open courses were sort of poo-pooed. <laughs> this is never gonna be anything. And surprise, surprise, it's something. And now we're moving forward. We've moved forward many times, but now we're moving forward again with you to develop the next new way to learn online. I, I have one question though, I've, I've got a hundred questions, but sure. what I'd like to start with is how will you figure out what to put where inside courses? How are you going to figure out how to make these courses immersive? I think that's a great question. And I will say that that's one we're still kind of starting to figure out um, along the way. And that's one of the joys of this continuous journey of continually pushing the boundaries of what's possible in online education in particular is finding out new ways to do things. Um, for this uh, set of courses that we're designing, we are one starting with insights we've leveraged from various industry partners, from our learners, from folks at Coursera uh, and general market research we've done to identify the topics that we think most benefit from immersive learning in particular, right? What are those things that really lend themselves to this sort of experiential immersive experience? Uh, and then pairing that with our typical focus of starting with the learners. Who are the target learners for this course and what are their needs? How can we make sure that we are meeting the outcomes they expect for the course in terms of what skills they take away, what conceptual knowledge they develop? And how can we focus in on where we anticipate they will be coming from in their lives, in their expectations, in their access to different kinds of technologies uh, and learning cultures? And then how can we pay particular access to or particular attention to access and accessibility here. As Jeremy mentioned, the goal is to make sure that as many learners as possible can leverage these same sort of immersive experiences. And so that means not cutting off access by using technology that is too expensive or too rare for learners to actually um, have access to. Uh, and then most importantly, being mindful of evaluation and understanding the effectiveness and impact of these experiences. We don't have everything figured out at this moment. Um, part of the beauty of this is that we're going to learn and understand more through research and evaluation as we implement these courses and invite our learners and our colleagues, both within higher ed and the industry space, to help us sort of leverage those best practices and those insights to then inform how we continuously design and redesign these kinds of immersive learning experiences online at scale. It's so, so exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I think some of it will be experimentation. Like, we'll see what's possible, how the technology will work. Like, we have some early indications with Interactive 360 video that we've seen some of the sessions that folks were just in. Uh, we, we'll, we'll explore with mobile phone AR. Uh, in some cases, we'll be doing a lot with virtual production, we hope, uh, kind of bringing folks into that space. Uh, and then, you know, the, the full immersive VR, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, I think it's still still a barrier for folks to have those headsets, but we do want to create some of these experiences that the folks that do have that uh, still can participate on that next level. And you know, because you've been working with us for so long, you understand how together we make sure that quality is, uh, is there. Um, of course, we will, as we do with all our courses, beta test with real learners to make sure that they're getting what they expect and you know we'll give you feedback. So I think together we'll really be able to make sure that these new courses using this technology are going to work and work for learners in ways that will help them succeed. Yeah, we're definitely counting on that feedback um, and helping us find ways to confirm that we are indeed achieving the outcomes that we're looking for. But I'm curious, Betty, for you, 
how does this initiative and the broader concept of, of immersive learning, um, how is Coursera thinking about that and what that means for the future of online education? So we're, we're sort of in the same place that you are, you know, we know that we want to keep moving forward. If we need to keep innovating, we need to, to keep thinking about what's the best way to help learners develop the skills that they need. And we're so appreciative of the work that you're doing at Michigan to do that research, to figure out what works, how can it work? And the work that we've investigated says this is a real thing. So this is the next step in Coursera's journey to make learning of high quality and accessible to everybody. It's really just the next step. You know, we started, as we talked about, with open courses. They're much more sophisticated today than they, uh, they were right at the beginning. We've learned a lot about how people learn over the course of this 10-year uh, journey. Then we moved into labs and projects because we recognize that even though things are online, people want to be part of the learning. They don't just want to sit back and absorb. And now with XRVR, it's going to take us even one step further. I don't know where we're going to end. I don't know what the last step is, thankfully, but this sure is the next step in our journey. So now it's back to me. Yeah. Everybody's talking about the metaverse and how that's going to change not just the way we learn but the way we live what do you folks think about how that connects with the learning that we're talking about yeah i mean i think it's it's a it's the it's the hot phrase right now the buzzword uh around the metaverse there's there's a lot happening in industry there's a lot happening with companies rebranding themselves uh <laughs> yeah. uh in that area and i think you know, I conceptualize it as, you know, a space, the spatial internet, right? The, uh, you know, be, how the internet is today, it isn't just one place, it isn't just one thing you do, but how we can embody the internet, how we can kind of experience these, uh, whether it be teachings, whether it be training, whether it be shopping, collaborating with friends, I, I think there'll be a place for it. And like some of the early work that I, I see we're doing, like the virtual diag we created here, it's starting to lay the foundation of how we can contribute to that and what Michigan can bring, can bring to that in terms of how do we teach in this space? How do we evaluate? Is it the right tool? We're, we're very interested in understanding where best does AR fit, where best does VR fit, where does virtual production make more sense um, for those learning goals and objectives? So I think it's exciting to be uh, at the forefront of that. You know, when the XR initiative started, you know, the, all the metaverse term goes back to Neil Stevenson's book, you know, some 30 years ago. Uh, it's all coalescing. And so I feel like mm -hmm. we've hit things at the right time to, to help influence at that on many levels, um, whether it's from the data privacy and security and uh, legislation to teaching to employer. And you know, I'm really excited about the future of work, how we can upskill uh, employees and, and kind of the next generation of both people that can build and create these XR experiences, but that will use XR uh, to, to enhance uh, their learning. Yeah, I'm really, really excited about the idea of simulation changing what where people have to be in order to learn some of these professions that are critically important to our world, but are really expensive to appropriate. If we can lessen the cost of educating the world, and I'm not just talking about people who are within 100 miles of Ann Arbor, Michigan, I'm talking about educating the world if we can help folks in the global south through uh, augmented reality, the world is going to be a better place. And I, uh, I really believe that together, we're going to head down that path. Well, I agree with that, Betty. I think that you and I were in a conversation yesterday and one of the things we talked about was the ways in which XR can help us create learning simulations in where otherwise doing the same thing in real life would be challenging or expensive or just um, unsafe potentially. Mm -hmm. And the ways in which being able to open up the opportunities for how someone can experience something and learn through that experience without having to subject themselves or another person to a sense of danger or the incredible cost that might come with 
uh, recreating a, a, a in real life version of something is just the opportunities are astronomically huge here. Um, one of the courses that we will be developing is around nursing skills, especially given how much the profession has seen some devastating impacts after the COVID-19 pandemic. And particularly for the Global South, as you're mentioning, this is an opportunity for them to rebuild workforces in the healthcare space um, through augmented reality tools that can teach things that are just really challenging to teach in real life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we'd love to open it up to some questions. We see some comments going through in the chat here, but love to open it up. If anyone has any questions for us, uh, we've got a few minutes left before uh, we'll wrap up day one uh, here and, and talk about tomorrow. But any any thoughts or any questions from folks uh, that you'd love uh, us to answer? Um, so some interests, some concerns about accessibility and in, in areas. Could you talk about that maybe a little bit, Betty, just in terms of like uh, areas that don't have access to all the infrastructure and technology and like because you have learners in every country on the planet, right? Accessing, how is that, yeah, how, how has that gone? What have been some of those challenges and what is Coursera doing to help? Uh, so um, there are many parts of the world where good broadband access is not a given. And so what Coursera does is a, a couple of things. First, uh, our courses are mobile enabled, so folks can learn on their, can learn on their phones. And secondly, we have uh, very low cost data downloads. So you can download when you've got access to Wi-Fi, and then you've got something on your phone or wherever, and you can study without having to spend the cost of going back and forth. Um, that's being particularly successful in uh, the Global South, of course, but also for women. Women use mobile learning more than men on Coursera. And of course, I hypothesize why. And my hypothesis is because women don't have very much time and they take every minute they've got to learn. And they do that, you know, because they've got their phone and they're on, I don't know, they're on the bus and they say, oh, I've got 10 minutes here. I could learn something. So we're very proud of the fact that women are using our mobile um, approach to learning to help them move forward faster. That's great. That's great. And Lauren, from, from our perspective, what have we seen from learners globally? We've seen a sort of exactly what Betty is saying. Um, the a large number of our learners actually in the, you know, the 8 million learners we've reached on Coursera, most of them are not in the US. They're from India, they're from Brazil. They're from lots of different countries around the world. Something like 200 different countries are represented in that portfolio. And a number, large number of those learners are engaging with us via their phone. One thing that our team takes very seriously is making sure that the content we're producing is as accessible as it can possibly be. Because we know that so many learners are engaging by mobile devices or because they might need assistive technology to fully engage in that experience. And so it's important for us to make sure we have appropriate alt tags and images that we're describing mm -hmm charts and graphs effectively that the resources we're providing can be downloaded in an accessible fashion. And the same is true for these learning experiences as well, these more immersive experiences. One of the challenges I think we have here is trying to ensure that we can create an equitable uh, immersive experience for someone who's only uh, accessing it by a phone or through an assistive technology as much as possible. And so one of the things we look forward to doing is finding new ways to help other organizations who are creating great learning and immersive experiences do the same thing. Yeah, it's it's exciting. I mean, that's why I'm most excited about the virtual production because, you know, we can immerse the the faculty or the you know the educators in these environments, and it can still be consumed on a you know a, a 2D device, a mobile phone, computer. Um, there's a question about how long does it take these AR learning experiences. I think we'll we'll explore that. Um, you know, I don't anticipate the whole course, like every lecture kind of being in, you know, but we'll, we'll find the right time where it makes sense to go try something or to go see what it looks like. Um, you know, there's uh, Instagram, Snapchat do AR filters. They don't call them, you know, augmented reality, but they do a trillion, you know, filters a year. Well, could we do things where we project onto kind of a surface or, you know, kind of onto your skin if you have a device that has that capability? Um, and so we'll be exploring those areas. Um, 
And so, yeah, I think there's just there's a lot of exciting things. There's some, you know, we'll be cautious and, and thoughtful as, as we go through this and we'll try to strike that right balance. And, and you know, if we get off path, we'll, we'll correct it as we go forward. So we talked earlier about, um, you know, the indicators of quality and the quality that we, uh, we build in or we help our partners build into all our courses. One thing that we know is that for video, a video should not be more than five to seven minutes long because nobody can tolerate more than five to seven minutes. Um, and often it should be interspersed with questions. Now, something that I think is going to be really interesting to explore is whether or not those rules hold true in a virtual, in, a, in augmented reality. My hypothesis is people will be interested much longer because it's so much more immersive, but that's a hypothesis. And that's something we have to test together. Agreed, I'm looking forward to trying that out and also seeing how that varies depending on the kind of XR we're integrating. Right, to Jeremy's point, there is a wide spectrum of XR. I think most folks fixate on virtual real reality when we're also exploring augmented reality and immersive and virtual production. And I also suspect that much like we all get easily sucked into some of our favorite TV shows, yeah. um, Mandalorian shout out right there, uh, that are created with these sort of, sort of technologies, um, the immersiveness and the engagement that you might see within a uh, video produced that way would be a lot higher. And maybe we want to watch longer. Um, whereas if we're, you know, for one of our courses that's leveraging augmented reality, I also suspect you're going to play with that more, right? You're going to want to try it from different angles and move it around and see how it works. And you don't feel like you're learning in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't feel like you're trapped watching a, a video for a long time and your attention span is gonna be longer than it might have otherwise been if you were just watching a traditional lecture video. And so it'll be interesting to explore how that works from type, you know, type of XR to type of XR and across different disciplinary areas. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the research that we've all seen thus far says that people learn more and retain better if that's the case uh, in, in, the, in the world that we're, ex we're developing here, the, the sky's the limit, absolutely. Because if people can learn more and learn more quickly and have more practical skills, it's the trifecta. You know, that's what we want to, uh, to provide learning to everyone. And it's gonna be particularly of use to organizations that need to very quickly get their workforces up to date on a brand new skill because an emerging technology came out or because the modality in which they work suddenly changed drastically as we've all experienced in the last two years. And being able to pick up that new learning, that new skill, that new knowledge even faster is gonna be a great boon for organizational development. Absolutely. Well, we thank you so much betty we really appreciate our collect continued collaboration with coursera and what the future holds i really just appreciate everything we had a great discussion you know thank you so much betty and, and lauren and uh stay tuned to see what we all create together yeah, absolutely well thank you both and thanks to everyone who's uh, been watching this afternoon you know you're now you're not the folks that are going to share the news and uh, we're very excited about what's coming up. Agreed. And if you want to follow the developments of these XR uh, enhanced courses, I mean, encourage you to follow us on Twitter at UMish Online or go to online.umich.edu and sign up for our newsletter. And, we'll be and sharing more soon. in the meantime, Coursera has great courses that are not XR. Lots of them come from the University of Michigan. Coursera.org, that's the place to go. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you both very much. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us on the first day of our second annual XR at Michigan Summit. Uh, for those people that are able to tra travel to Ann Arbor, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for an exciting hands-on experience at the Michigan Union in the Rogel Ballroom on the second floor. Attendees will be able to try out many XR experiences try out these different devices, see the work that's happening here at Michigan. Uh, you'll be able to see a student showcase to see what the students have been creating and uh, work with some of the startups uh, in town and checking out their, their applications and their projects. So we look forward to seeing you all again next year if you're not able to be here in person uh, tomorrow. And thank you so much.